When was the last time you heard anyone say anything nice about airports or air travel in general? The closest I can remember boils down to it wasn't as terrible as they were expecting. And I'm not really sure that you can call that a compliment. It's usually a list of complaints. Long lines, extra delays, severe restrictions, the expensive everything. You know how it goes. It's hard to argue that modern air travel can be extremely frustrating. But when was the last time you really thought about how incredible flying really is? You are willingly paying someone to pack you into a metal tube that's sealed just well enough to hold in just enough air to keep you breathing. This glorified tin can is then launched off the ground to 30,000 feet moving at just shy the speed of sound. Of course, it's not usually described so dramatically, but has it become so commonplace that instead of being at least a little amazed at the whole process, we complain about the drinks? Before I continue, I've not been doing this long, but so far I really enjoy sharing all of this knowledge with you. If you've enjoyed watching, please take a second and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications, that way you never miss anything new. It only takes a moment for you, but it can make a big difference for me. Onwards! Just over 150 years ago, before the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, if you wanted to travel coast to coast in the US, you were looking at a multi-month ordeal, mostly along the Oregon Trail. The completion of the railroad cut that multi-month journey down to about a week. Even today, a cannonball run, which is an unsanctioned speed record that runs from New York to LA, currently sits at 25 hours and 39 minutes. That requires a highly illegal average speed of 110 miles an hour. The Cannonball Run actually started as a protest in the 70s against newly instated strict speed limits. But that story deserves a video all on its own. I've actually made a similar drive from Michigan to Oregon, and even rotating drivers and minimal stops it took us over 40 hours to get there. We always maintain the legal speed limit. We do! Anywho... Today, in your standard 747 passenger airliner, a coast-to-coast -coast journey across the US only takes about six hours. By stagecoach along the Oregon Trail, that would have been 1,440 hours. Flying sounds better. Now this is by no means the limit of our technology. Passenger airliners don't go faster because, among other reasons, sonic booms over populated areas don't tend to go over very well. Currently, the fastest jet is the SR-71 Blackbird. It was first put into military service in January 1966. It has a listed cruising speed of Mach 3.2, or 2,455 miles per hour, which means a coast-to-coast -coast flight in just under an hour. Our next big step will make even the Blackbird look slow. Suborbital flight is estimated to be able to take you from New York to Shanghai, so halfway around the world, in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. That's less time than the average American spends commuting back and forth to work every day. Any faster, and we might as well be teleporting. So, next time, someone you know 
starts to complain about flying, instead of joining in, stop and try to get them to appreciate just how spectacular flying really is. The wonder is out there. We just have to be looking for it.